Hi folks, so this is the surface geometry question from 2013 and again I have done as much of the setup as I can to save time. So what we're told in this question there that A and C have a pitch of 45 degrees and that is as much with the given information that I could draw um, without figuring anything else out. Okay, so just with the basic information that was it. Now the first thing we were asked to go and do in that question there was to get the dihedral angle between A and B. So, very uh, simple now at this stage, but first we need, thing we need to identify the line of intersection between A and B, which is this line here. And then the second thing we're going to do is to look in at that line at 90 degrees. Why? Because we want to get a true length for it. Okay, so we can run up these two lines here. Set up an XY line. Now you could measure the full height up, okay, here in elevation, but I, I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to take it, I'm going to pretend that that XY line there, that, that line there is a datum line. I'm just going to use this for a datum line in itself. So that there is going to have no height, if I want to call it one and two, okay. That'll be one, that'll be two up there. And the height of two then just going to measure it off here that'll be two up there okay now that's the true length of the line of intersection between uh, a and b also we need to bring on that of course to get that v-shape that we're always going to be looking for is we need to bring up one point from each plane so I'll just bring up this point here and here. Again, if we're using this line across here, the datum line, those will have no heights. So I'll just call those three and four. And four and three there as we look at it. And now, last thing to do, we're gonna look in this way to see the, tr the true length line of intersection as a point view. I set up my x2, y2. Now the only thing I ever seen people get bogged down on is they say, oh God, wh which, which x, y line do I measure from? Okay, well how you know is, you know that when you're measuring from the correct x, y line because it's parallel to the line of intersection for one, but the reason that's important is so that when you're measuring there, both point one and point two are the same distance, okay? Because when you go to mark them off down here, only if they're the same distance can you end up with a point view. If you measure from anywhere else, you'd have two different lengths and you would get a line. You must have a point view because we need to make that V-shape, okay? And then we'll just measure off there the other two points, which is four, and three and always try and bring them on the one line if you can folks it just saves time setting up so that's three there that's four down there and that will get us our dihedral angle now the next thing we're asked to do in that question is we were asked to go uh, it's to do with part C. It says all sloping edges on the underside of the diamond have a true length of 9.5 or 95 when scaled. Complete the elevation of the diamond as shown. So we're looking down there on these lines, okay? But we're, uh, we know the true length, but even if we had, had that drawn for us as in the question, we'd be looking at none of them in their true length. They'd all appear foreshortened, okay? Now you could, if you wanted to, you could, the difference with solving these as usual, you could take an auxiliary looking in at any one of those there, okay, and set up an XY line up there perpendicular, mark off your heights and elevation, uh, and bring up this guy and this guy, and you could mark off 95 mil, and then you'd know how far down, and you'd be able to transfer that two views back, okay. But if you think of this almost like 
a generator in a cone where we're just going to rebat this around okay so i just get my compass it's a handier way of doing it to save you time and if i set my compass there and i rebat that guy down there Where he hits that line, I'll bring it up. Okay, and now if I set my compass to 95 millimeters, and I swing from up here, where it hits that line coming up, I would be able to draw in this construction line here okay now that would find me the height that i need okay so i could just run across a height line then like that okay because think think about a cone in solids in contact if you had a cone there and you had a point on the side if you were rotate that around horizontally okay it'll always have the same height off the ground and the same thing will work true here that'll find us the height for the point off the ground and then we just go then and draw, join up these guys and finish out your elevation there. Okay. Last thing you're going to have to do there, folks, uh, D is to get the dihedral angle between surfaces D and F. Okay. So D and F are here on the underside. F would be under E. Okay. And that would be D there. So again, standard procedure, we're going to find the true length of the line of intersection, look along it, bring a point from it, both, both uh, planes, and that will uh, help us figure out this, the dihedral angle. Okay, so line of intersection between D and F is this line here. So we're going to look in at that at 90 degrees. Set up your protractors. In our XY line. Now with the height and elevation there, we can take them. That is the true length, okay. Now we need one point from each plane, of course. You can take that anywhere. Then I'll just slide these back a bit. Oh, I'll, just take, I'll just pick two points here. that S, I call that T. I just get their height and elevation there. And I'll leave those in a moment. So the next thing we're going to have to do is look along that true length line to let us see that as a point view. Now I may have to get a piece of paper now and put this under because it may go to go off the sheet. So you know I should have got the height put on there first. So I'm just going to measure the height of S there. Get the height of T. Now 
I'm just going to slip in a piece of paper here in case it goes off. So set, set up then when you're ready there folks, uh, we'll set in our X2, Y2 line. Now I'm going to put in a datum line actually, just keep this thing tidier. So I'm going to slide down there. And I'm going to put a datum line, I'm actually going to put it right in on top of T. Okay, so that means T will be here on the ground. And S, we get the distance of S there now with our compass. So a datum line, same thing as the next one, Y line, it's just foreshortening that distance, you'll still get the same results. Now, if I didn't do that, it would have gone way off the page otherwise, okay? And the last thing there, and how do you know, as I said, you know you're measuring off the right XY line or datum line when it's the same distance either side to each point, okay? Because otherwise, you'd end up with a line and not a point view. So, that's the true length there, is a point view. I can set up my dihedral angle now. And that is that question finished, okay? So, uh, again, as you can see, dihedral angles commonly coming up, coming up twice in some cases, okay? So, find the line of intersection, take a point from each plane, look along it, set up that V-shape, and, you know, you're always working from two views back. Again, as we said down here, you know, you're, you're always, know you're measuring off the, a, the right X1, or the X, right XY line, when the points, the line of intersection is the parallel to the XY line or the, the same distance. Only that way can you end up with a point view down here. So hope you found that useful folks. Uh, more videos to come, so stay tuned and keep keep well.